Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you this afternoon, uh, particularly to uh, our, our distinguished uh, guest speaker, Mr. Adil Hussain. Uh, by now, all of you would be aware of who he is if you weren't already. Uh, and for me, of course, it's an enormous privilege uh, to host him this, uh, this afternoon. I've spent a very stimulating hour and a half with him. And uh, it was a huge learning experience for me as well. Okay, and uh, you see, the, the thing about him is that he broke out of the constraints of geography uh, very quickly and became an embodiment and a proof of something what we call it art sans frontier. It is art without uh, frontiers. Born in Assam, uh, born in Assam, Gwalpara. Uh, 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 not very far from where I was born, by the way, but many years apart. <laughs> uh, same month ago, really? same month, many years apart. And uh, he went into uh, what uh, initially, after his initial years, I think he read uh, philosophy for, for a bit, and yeah. then went into what the Kassan is called mobile uh, theater. Yeah. Uh, mobile theater for some years. Uh, Graduated into the uh, into the wide world soon enough. Studied at the National School of Drama in Delhi and uh, uh, the Drama Studio in in, in London. Correct. In, in London. Uh, since then, uh, as you might be aware, he's he's been into films, acted in uh, uh, international films like Miranaz, The Reluctant uh, Fundamentalist, and Lee's uh, uh, Life of Pi, etc. And his acting spread. Uh, across uh, countries, regions, languages. He's acted in films that uh, uh, Assamese, Bengali, uh, Tamil, Marathi, Malay, Norwegian, French. He has also taught and earned many awards. This afternoon, this afternoon is of course to celebrate the achievements of, uh, of, of Adil Hussain. Uh, and uh, by now you will have some idea that he does do all of us in South Asia are proud, uh, uh, proud. And, but we would, uh, in this discussion, uh, apart from celebrating Adil, we'd like to uh, do some, something more. Uh, within the broad parameters, uh, because we are in the presence of our uh, director, the, the mighty political scientist, uh, Oh, goodness, uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Subrata Ross, we have to, Subrata Mitra, we have to keep within the confines of of, of the mandate, uh, we'll try to do that uh, as much as possible. <laughs> so we will look at uh, the kind of power, soft power that uh, that a media like uh, like movie, uh, cinema exerts uh, or is able to exert. Uh, whether Indian movies uh, do that, uh, how also how what we see on what is broadly known in South Asia as the silver screen, how it shapes our minds and intellects. And thirdly, how people like Adil Hussain, uh, uh, who have made names for themselves in this world, how they can interact with the broader community in a way that is uh, mutually rewarding. That we benefit from these interactions and he of course uh, not that he has much to learn from us, but he also uh, uh, also uh, broadens, deepens his uh, experience, as he said. Uh, uh, High Commissioner, I recognize the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka. Welcome, and uh, do sit down. So we will do all that. Uh, but before, uh, uh, what I will do is I'll let him speak for about five minutes or so, and thereafter I'll get into a sort of a one-on-one. -on -one what we call uh, interfere organ uh, and the four eyes conversation and and then open the floor for a wider conversation with participation from the audience. So I think you have the next five minutes just to give a little introduction of what you are about and what you think you are about. <laughs> then, then we will open it up for first one on one and then yes. the audience. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Uh, it's a privilege to be here, of course, Institute of South Asian Studies, and thank you so much for conversing with me. I'm honored and privileged. Um, what you have already spoken about um, the afternoon, what it, it should sort of appear and emerge, 
Um, apart from that, I what do I say about myself? Well, I just I can describe myself as the person who loves acting. As simply as simple as that. And for me, acting is the process of an action done by a doer. The one who does an action is an actor. All of you are sitting here. If the word sitting, if it is a verb, then you are actually doing something. So you do something. I'm talking, so doing, talking, sitting, looking at the phone, so looking. Or all those things are actions, and the actor of the doer of the action is an actor. And in that sense, yes, I am an actor. And not in the sense of I am an actor. Um, <laughs> and um, I have been doing it since my childhood, since I was five years old. Uh, I used to gather my neighborhood, neighborhood friends and I used to mimic the Bollywood actors. And it started like that, of course, and uh, went into fall in love with it. And I decided to be an actor at the age of 12. And uh, rebelling against my father, especially, who wanted me to become a professor in English and teach. And I said, I would teach, but not necessarily English. So I teach now, I teach acting. And I've been teaching in India and abroad. I love it. It's in my, you know, in my family, in my blood. And um, about the subject today, India's soft power, the Indian movie industry, uh, this definitely is an extremely relevant subject because I remember coming out of Dharmendra's film called Yadu Ki Barat. I don't know how many people have heard about it. Yadu Ki Barat means the caravan of memories, I guess. No? And I remember coming out with an attitude which is revengeful and I wanted to kill everybody who defies me and at the age of 12 and I knew that how strong this medium is cinema is that it shapes and it sort of drills into you a certain emotional uh, attitude which uh, governed our lives when I was, and still it does, depending on what kind of movie and how powerful the narrative and the directors and the craft is, depending on that, how much it influences, how much it sort of dictates the way we think and feel, and especially when education is very difficult to, uh, uh, sort of accessibility of education is less in a, in a country like India and other poor countries, how films they become the philosophies of life, the dialogues and everything. So it is extremely relevant and we should definitely talk about it. Um, having said that, uh, over to you. Um, and I'm very, very grateful to be here. So okay, uh, the title that you see there, yes. I've just seen actually, is really borrowed from this book by Rupa Swaminathan, okay. as you know, which is, which is uh, I think she calls it, uh, um, Bollywood uh, Boom, India's Rising Power. And uh, she feels that uh, this is a tremendous medium that, uh, that has transformed the perception of India in, 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 in uh, global minds. I mean, time was uh, when, when we, you talked of the great Khan, you talked of Jimmy's Khan and Kublai Khan. And then eventually it was Shah Rukh Khan that replaced them in the minds of this is the point she makes. Though this, this has been challenged, by the way, yes, in, yes. even in the movie, movie uh, uh, lit, literature. But uh, uh, ever since uh, we, have, as I said, have we had this very stimulating discussion. But ever since a child, I remember, I remember the medium of movie being used as uh, a medium to transmit a message from a system to the audience. Initially, during the Cold War years, uh, we remember going to the Soviet movies like the Cranes Are Flying. I mean, the Bengali translation with Jolak Chak Paira was the uh, uh, flock of, uh, of, of pigeons flying. But the Cranes of Flying was a very powerful, almost a Stalinist uh, movie. Hollywood, as we know, I mean, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from beginning to Top Gun, etc., much of it was designed in order to influence public opinion. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why McCarthy and all that went, in, went after, after Hollywood before he went after others because as a as a, yes. a, a, a this thing of uh, core of uh, socialist or com communist influence. 
But do you really feel that the Indian media has been able to sort of, uh, 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 Indian movie industry has been effectively used? I don't know who's using it or who, or if anyone should be using it. At all, but is it playing any role in sort of shaping people's mind in a way that gives India a position, a higher position in the perception of the global community? I don't know about the higher position, but <clears throat> one thing which I keep facing whenever I travel abroad with the uh, kind of films, and it definitely uh, brings, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because it's very funny also, that India is a place where you can sort of sing and dance. You know, it's easy for people to break out from the emotional, you know, uh, defense mechanism, and you can. That's the only thing which is happening, according to me, that it is a country um, where uh, people are funny, people are nice, and you can, you can always uh, break into laughter and singing and dancing. I don't think it has been designed by anybody to create power or to influence opinion about India. I don't think it is at all um, being manipulated by the, by, the, by the governments of India, I don't think that at all. It's just individual Bollywood directors and producers, those who come up with these <coughs> strange uh, films, and uh, they uh, somehow influence the minds of uh, those who are non-Indians, those who, I don't know what's the percentage of people even non-Indians watch, or those who watch Bollywood film, I have no idea about it. But there are quite a few numbers I've yeah, seen. Any numbers? Yeah. Is there? Um, sure. If you talk about Singapore, there's no, a huge Malaysian community that would watch the song yes. dance. The yes. um, interesting bit about Bollywood is, unlike other regions, even a chameleon or a person from the Yatra would come and watch Bollywood. Right. While someone who's a Hindi movie watcher mm. would may not go and watch a regional movie. Yes. So the full it has, it's so true across uh, the globe, if you see the distribution numbers, right. it's the way that Bollywood has a full like no other, because interestingly, the image of the song and dance is still in the Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was, by the way, Sreyashi from Darpan, which was our partner in uh, this, this event with us tonight. But uh, as we are driving back uh, moments ago, or minutes ago, we talked a little about uh, the influence that cinema has in, in, uh, in the relationship of the various political units within South Asia with one another. Hmm. Uh, I speak of the principal protagonists in South Asia, which is Pakistan and India. Uh, immediately, the film, uh, a recent film, uh, not so recent, but Rangi Bhaijal comes to mind. Uh, one could argue that the child the child that uh, uh, that uh, Saman Khan was taking across to to, uh, to Pakistan was a metaphor for friendship. Yes. I mean, the child was dumb and the child uh, 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 couldn't hear, but uh, she was a metaphor for friendship. And he returns her to her parents, and then he well not then I mean he still has the child, but when he's mesmerized by a song in a uh, um, in, in, in a in a mosque or, or shrine. <coughs> uh, Medina, my daughter, Rajam was I'll translate it for you immediately. I mean, fill up my sack of, uh, of blessings because I don't want to go back empty-handed, go back to India empty-handed. And he does uh, go back with the feelings, these uh, 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 of, of, uh, of also friendship, uh, that, that reciprocation he, he goes back with. When it does, though, I mean, also in Bhadrangi Bhaijan, by the way, it, it, uh, I don't know if there has been any interpretation of it, but it just occurred to me that down the line there is yet another song about a chicken. You see, and he says that if you are hungry, it's the chicken which fills your stomach. And dharam ad brasht ho jai. Even if the religion, the faith should go today, not to worry. Apparently, apparently, according to Pakistan media, this wasn't very well received. In the, by the Indian right. right. Uh, that, uh, um, also, earlier on, uh, uh, during uh, my younger days, um, when, when there used to be problems like the 65 war between India and Pakistan, uh, there were sort of movies on both sides. 
uh, also the Pakistan side, I remember a film called uh, 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 Lakho Me A, which was a bit of a translation, uh, something like a translation of, uh, of, uh, of a train to Pakistan, for sure, the same. Whereas, of course, it's about friendship and love between the boy and the girl, but at the same time, the girl says to the boy that, remember, that, and I'll say this in Urdu and, and translate it in, into English, it's also written in the fate that your name is Dildar Khan and my name is Shakuntala and that makes all the difference. So yes, uh, movies have been used, uh, it can be used, it depends on the in, uh, individual directors, but I think it just goes to sometimes show us that, that uh, elements that unite us in South Asia uh, actually deeper than those that divide. Would it be something that you'd agree with? Um, I think so. Even sports, I would say, that can come together, but it can also be used to divide us. Um, I unfortunately haven't seen Bajaragi Bhajanam, and uh, so I'm not able to comment on that at all. And I'm just, I just heard about there's a boy, and as you said, so I don't have any idea. A girl, actually. A girl, okay. There you but go. that's a metaphor, as I yes, said. Yes. For me, it's a metaphor. Yes. But I guess, I think uh, we, can, we can do more with films. We can do way more to, to build these relationships between the countries, including, of course, all, um, all the countries, especially, as you said, the two protagonists. Uh, those who keep finding reasons to fight and instead of coming together, uh, which is very sad because till today I didn't dare to go to Pakistan because if I had a Pakistani visa on my passport, I'd have problems to go to another other European countries. Uh, and I was offered a Pakistani film um, uh, to play the play the protagonist of a, something called Liari Project, a uh, Liari. Uh, is an underworld situation in Karachi, or I forgot Lahore, Karachi, I guess. And I just didn't dare to take it up. Um, so, uh, at the same time, I think it is so important for artists, all the artists, all kinds of artists, not only films, all kinds of artists, to come together in order to tell our governments that we art must be given the opportunity to find a way to access the, the layers beyond the hatred or whatever the, 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 the politicians and the media is trying to sort of garner and to cultivate amongst the common people um, uh, and go beyond that and, 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 and find a way to, to show that we are all the same people. And I have heard stories from my theatre uh, uh, friends, those who have gone to Pakistan and performed, and all of them are non-Muslims, and they have gone and performed, and they came back to tell me stories that, hey, you know what happened? I went to this shari shop, and when they came to know I'm from India, they didn't take money. And this is this uh, this story is invariably been told to me by all my friends who has who have been to Pakistan. So the relationship between the common people, I mean, it is obvious that we are the same people, you know, culturally, maybe not towards the, like Northeast and Gujarat would be equally different than uh, India and the uh, westmost Pakistan, you know, culturally. Like from Assam and the kind of food that we eat is very different than what Gujaratis eat in Gujarat. But at the same time, somehow we are bound together with the similar cultural values and the feelings and the emotional body, which I'm very concerned about because I'm an actor and I use it. So yes, I think we can do much more and we should use it consciously and strategically, but with a good intention, unlike what Americans have done to go to war and Second World War. You know, they use the media, they hire all these top five directors to create movies so that they can get uh, recruitment, uh, recruitment uh, they can recruit people uh, to join the army. Uh, not with that intent. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, okay. uh, in fact, you didn't go to Pakistan, but you went to Bangladesh. I went to Bangladesh. You went to Bangladesh. Yes. And uh, in, uh, while on the, going to Bangladesh, you had an issue with regard to your troop, or group had an issue with regard to <laughs> visa. And that was uh, settled at the last moment. Yes. And the head of your 
Troop said that it was something like 007. Yes. So it just shows yeah. that despite all the closeness and connections yes. you might have, still you belong to two different political lineages. The division yes. is there. Yes. And yesterday we had another seminar in which we discussed the pains of partition in Punjab. Yes. Uh, but but in a completely different sense. But it tells it conveys the same exactly. kind of sentiment. But ironically, sorry, to interrupt. Yeah. Ironically, the film that we were about to shoot, where, where uh, the one that we shot in Bangladesh, is about that. <laughs> That's right, Marty, The film about <laughs> Marty. Yeah. And you did speak of reshareshi among families, yes. the differences among families. Uh, Marty was, uh, I think, uh, uh, again, a family divided in the partition of Bengal, was it not? Uh, no, it was not. It was about actually that the protagonist, the uh, female protagonist of the film, believed that her grandparents were killed by these uh, Bangladeshi uh, Muslims. And she believed in that story, and she wanted to go and see her putrik Shampati and the, the, family the family property in Bangladesh. And she happened to be invited by one of her friends who she studied with uh, abroad. And she's getting married, so our protagonist goes to attend her uh, marriage. And across her house, the friend's house, that was her family house, her protagonist family house. And the person who lives in that house is me, comes to uh, receive her at the airport, but I was asked not to tell uh, the female protagonist that who I am. And then finally she finds out that I'm the guy who lives in her house, and uh, then slowly in the course of the film she realizes that the story was not what, it, 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 what she heard. The story is very different. Who killed her, killed their grandparents? So, um, so they come together at the end. It's not a very romantic story, but they recognize each other's uh, false perception about each other. So that's the film, which is beautiful. I think that's why I decided to do the film. And uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, that's that's right. Uh, but staying on the uh, on on this kind of sure. messages that movies can give. Yes. Uh, could I invite you to uh, do a little discussion on on parallel films right. and why it met the kind of fate that it didn't deserve to. I mean, vis-a-vis -vis the masala types yes. that we were talking about yes. earlier when we were all constantly had these insertions of song and dance in the in the, in the thing of the yeah. traffic, etc. Uh, Bengal had, of course, a very, very strong tradition of parallel yes. films with yes. with Shatiji Rai yes. and uh, even the 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 culture, and, and yeah. even the Marxist genre of uh, and yes. uh, 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 movies, etc. But they didn't do terribly well. I mean, uh, they didn't, perhaps because, uh, I was wondering why, but maybe we had some uh, this thing, uh, clues from you because of, of the kind of, uh, 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 because they were low cost, obviously, I mean, to put it very crudely, I mean, there's not enough incentive uh, for, for people to get engaged in, in those films. That could be one of those. And, uh, and the other thing is, this, in, in sociological terms, ideas also keep changing. Because Shen gives way to, uh, to from socialist Bengal to an intensely capitalist Bengal, so you have a different uh, different uh, uh, value system. Yes. Um, there, there were films like uh, this is the word in, even in Bombay, um, the films like Awara, which is a bit like uh, uh, almost like Wordsworth's uh, uh, Michael. You go into this city and you, you yes. get lost. Yes. You, 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 you get lost. There has been or had been a a tendency to return uh, to it through the, the Mumbai noir uh, uh, genre. I mean, you know the, yes. the evils of, of, of Bombay, uh, but that didn't work uh, either very much. But I think I mean we don't give the uh, the capacity of the Indian film to uh, to influence uh, the global audience. I mean, as we began the conversation, that much credit, but it it, uh, it has. I mean, uh, I have. Uh, traverse the world, so to say, but uh, Indian film has talked about known Indian film actors, people like you, I mean, uh, one of the reasons I know so much about you, for instance, for starters, is uh, uh, I'm a diplomat, uh, art politician, uh, academic, etc., but, but you know, I mean, obviously because I've been informed, I've been kept informed right. of what you do, and, and my attraction to films is, is does not generate from any intellectual curiosity, but out of sort of day-to-day -day, uh, yes. exposure to the world. So I think uh, there is a possibility 
that we can use this media far more effectively. But when we say we are in uh, uh, communities, um, uh, both academic community, public policy making community, yes. uh, 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 in a way to sort of make a positive contribution towards bettering societies. Anyway, I'm not going to open this conversation to the wider audience and uh, all of you have by now some idea about uh, what uh, you know, others are about. <laughs> and uh, so I will invite you to uh, make your comments, uh, place your queries, uh, etc. Mr. Bird. Uh, if I may move you a little bit beyond India's soft and ask you a question about transporting the written word. Transporting? The written word right. into a message given through the film. Mm -hmm. uh, you acted in uh, the Reluctant Parliament. Uh, the guy who wrote that book is uh, the son of a very good friend of mine. Okay. So I had a conversation with Mohsen. I read the book, I have not seen the movie. Can this be uh, uh, to, to echo the feedback? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So as I said, I, I read the book, enjoyed it enormously. It's a very powerful book. I have not seen the movie. The movie yet. Uh, I asked Mawson, I said, as you know, the book is a monologue. There's one guy who talks and talks and talks and talks over. He's the guy. <laughs> no, 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 I'm the guy who's been talked about. <laughs> uh, over 100 pages. Yes. But the, uh, but the book is, uh, uh, does not come up with a conclusion. Mm. And I asked Mohsen, I said, what happens to these two guys mm. as they're walking from the cafe to the hotel? Right. Does one of them kill the other because it is about terrorism and so on and so forth? And he, his answer was very interesting. He said, uh, I really don't know. Because uh, I couldn't come to that kind of conclusion. So the question that I want to ask you is, since I've not seen the film, was that thing resolved in the film? <laughs> it didn't. It, it wasn't. No. So it was. the question was left open as to yes. uh, what the two yes. antagonists in this particular case, the American and the Pakistan. Yes. The CIA officer in Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could I uh, also. Oh, my could... larger question remains. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but is the movie a medium where some of these tensions uh, get resolved, should get resolved, which are not uh, uh, done in the written world? And not done in? Which is not done in the written world. In the written world. Uh, sorry, you have to come here. Yeah. Well, the question is, uh, since movies tell a story, mm. uh, the written word is much beyond that. It gives a message. Right. The philosophy when you mean by written that. word, you mean written word in the books? Yeah. The written word, word, uh, the written word in the books okay. gives a message. Okay. When it is translated into a film, into right. a movie, uh, should that message be communicated as strongly as written right. uh, in the book, or do movie makers have their own message? Right. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. I, they always take liberty to, uh, like for example, Life of Pi, where I acted. Uh, the director had gone beyond the book. I mean, if the director is a capable and competent director and has a different vision. And the writers of the books mostly uh, keep uh, the, the the right with themselves, but yet they understand that it's a different medium altogether. So they give up that right to the director or the or the screenplay writer in order to improvise, or as in this case that Mr. Watson, who told you that it is ambiguous whether you know you are free to choose and to imagine what is what could have happened to these two different uh, characters. And so it was in the film. And uh, so, yes, it depends on the director. They can stick to the letter, to the end, that I'll follow the book, or I'll go by the book. And it also depends upon uh, the director whether he or she would go and finally uh, interpret it completely differently. And uh, yeah, that's, that's quite often what happens, if that's the question.
Okay. Yeah, but sometimes in the movie, I mean, my little two points worth of intervention. Uh, the movie does not necessarily have to reflect any book because the movie can in independently be its own media. If you, for instance, have a, okay, I mean, have a film on on, on the return of Odysseus from 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 uh, Troy, yes. okay, Re Ulysses, yes. he comes back home. So there's one way of telling a story. It was told 50 years ago that he comes back home. And and for 10 years he says it's a friend, it's an adventure story. But you can convey, I mean, o over years a different kind of message emerges from the return of Ulysses. I mean, you see, it, it does different things, you have different perceptions while Ulysses comes back, you have you, uh, the, the politics, the milieu in which he comes back when he comes back home, uh, there's conflict within the family, etc. So over time, this, the same theme would probably convey a different story, more in consonance yes. with the thinking of that day, yeah. day and age. The interventions will be in the following order, Mr. Surya Narayana, uh, Dr. Ronajoy Sen, Ms. Soji. So, sorry, uh, sorry, Narayana. Okay, sir. Uh, my you want to be seen. But uh, you are, I'm sure, aware of uh, Empty Ramachandran, do you describe that hold on the people's mindset to relatively better of states in India as soft power or hard power? What kind of power was that at all? If it is being characterized. And secondly, uh, I'm sure you are aware of Nagam and uh, the multilingual Telugu origin film Bahubali. Uh, I don't know whether you have seen them, but, uh, yeah. uh, but you, I'm sure you are aware of I'm that. very aware of yeah. yes. Well, how do you describe that? Has it made any difference to so-called Indian soft power outside of India, or is it just a commercial, uh, you know, venture by the producers? And thirdly, uh, the Gandhi movie, I'm sure you are aware of, Patan Barrow's Gandhi movie. Of course, it was not taken by an Indian. Does it really add to India's soft power or image or negative? Thank you. My first question that you asked me was about um, um, uh, MGM. MGM, MGM, I think it's political power, sorry, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to, uh, to put it lightly. Um, uh, our Amma, um, Jalalita and MGM, uh, they forgot her the name, huh? <laughs> Amma. Yeah. No, I mean, she is so much known as Amma. Yeah, that's right. and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it is amazing power. I don't know whether to call it soft or hard or political or, you know, but power, for sure. Uh, even the daughters and the sons and offsprings have their power, uh, you know, for, uh, which, inherited, which is inherited from their great-grandfather who once uh, ruled the industry, film industry. It is uh, great power. I mean, and then uh, the second question about... Um, uh, Lagan. I think Lagan is one sensible movie that might give some insights to um, you know certain aspects of how we were and the relation between us and the Britishers. So I feel we should call. Uh, I think that I would call that a soft power when softly you enter the psyche of a foreign brain or a mind and gently nudge it to change the perception of us through certain medium, and that could be through uh, film. It could be a dance as well. A dance when you dance a Bharatanatyam or a good Sanjit Dabhani or, uh, or uh, uh, any kind of dance, a great performance, Bhiji Maharajji, when you dance, and, and when, when someone watches it and realizes, oh my god, what beauty, what sense of grace and elegance that in the movement has and so one sees the higher and finer human qualities of that culture where this dance was born and or emerged from. That is soft power. And most of the films are not, unfortunately, because it talks about gross things. It talks about violence like Bahu for me is just simply a revengeful movie and there's nothing great about that movie except for because I haven't seen that but I know the story. I mean and the kind of skill that have gone, I would rather watch it uh, better uh, VFX um, uh, 
what do you call it, the craft VFX by Hollywood. Um, and uh, I don't think that revenge stories will ever get us any soft power anywhere. It's not soft in the first place. How can it be soft power? I mean, logically speaking as well. And the last one, sorry, uh, Gandhi. Gandhi. Yes, I would say that is a soft power. Because it's made so, this is the best movie that I have seen on Gandhi and his philosophy. And in fact, if I can dare say that uh, Attenborough made me fell in love with Gandhi. After that I read, that's my experiment with truth. And then I ended up reading a lot of books on Gandhi, by Gandhi. And I understood this man that, oh my God, he comes from a very different space that common people would not even want to understand. He's a very gentle, soft, humble, and one would need a lot of perseverance and a lot of persuasion uh, to enter that world of what he's talking about. Right now, I have been studying Gita because I'm doing a performance. My next project is a conversation between Gita, uh, between Arjuna and Krishna. And I'm reading and I'm blown by it, completely blown by it, that people who claim themselves to follow that specific tradition in India, I have no clue about what actually, actually Krishna was talking about, what Krishna was telling Arjuna. There's no clue. The kind of and and, and so uh, Gandhi is a soft power. That film specifically could has become a soft power already because people have watched it and understood that Gandhi stood in those experimented wisdom. Not only uh, he was not the first one to experiment. It has been experimented by in Mahabharata and the gist of it is Gita. Standing on those amazing profound wisdom, he practiced it himself. And whatever, I mean, his, uh, I'm not saying that he embodied the entire philosophy, he didn't, maybe, and he had his follies, and, but he tried, and that is a monumental job that he has done. And I have immense respect for Gandhi for that. It is a soft job because it is very soft, very humble, very gentle. It does not slap you on the face. And it's very difficult to do something like that in films. To have that quality in a film, the director, the writer has to have immense understanding of the craft of filmmaking and his philosophical ideas about why he wants to do a film. The intent behind his action has to be very pure and clear about it. Not to make money only. Of course, you have to make money to make films because otherwise you would not be able to do the second film. Yes, that's, I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, to I, uh, well spoken actually in terms of answer, but you might, different people may derive different things from it. I, uh, about reading, for instance, I, I once I was traveling with a, with a doctor, mm -hmm. physician, uh, neurologist, and he was reading the Iliad. And I said, What are you reading the Iliad for? He says, You see, look at this description of injuries inflicted. I mean, right. Yeah, this thing. And he says that for, as a doctor, he, he took great interest. This man later on became a very, very famous physician. Uh, interesting. Uh, Bahubali, for instance, okay, you got me to see it. For, it was initially three hours waste, I thought. Eventually, now given my interest in tactical warfare, for instance, I was in, in, uh, in, in, actually incredibly interested in the way the battle was fought up. Right. You see? I mean, the, 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 the last, strategies. Yeah, the strategies. Okay. The strategies. And uh, yeah. I, I was saying this afternoon that I hope the Indian Army has something to learn from. <laughs> <laughs> learn from it. So it speaks to the present as well. And it, it speaks uh, to the curious curiosity in you. I mean, if you're curious about how, how the battle lines were drawn, how the shields uh, uh, acted as a wall right. and all that sort of thing, and how these uh, uh, you know, blankets were, were shot across the enemy lines. And in Bahubali, I found it interesting after the first two and a half, half hours. Okay, okay I'll go in this order now, and uh, uh, you will sort of uh, uh, speak uh, one after the other. Would you like to take it in clusters, or would you like to... Uh, no, wait, one after yeah, the other. One after the other. I'll problem. begin with Dr. Ramajai Sen first, after that interaction, Sojin, uh, Anish, uh, Rupak, uh, Dipinda, and Ankush. Oh, you're yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ramajai Sen. Yeah, I have a question actually related to the topic that I'm not in soft power, but something was raised by Dr. Chaudhary towards the end on the question of parallel cinema, which is actually now a term that's not so much used 
and I guess this was a phrase we call it independence. Yeah, yeah. 70s, 80s when yeah. the NFGC used to fund things. I gave my age away. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'm also very aware of it. But I think with you know, multiplexes and the way films are financed now, uh, I guess there's a lot of independence in what you make this. But uh, you do, you know, I've seen some of the films say, including, you know, uh, uh, film like Lutera, where you come on to two years. Uh, I haven't seen that, but, uh, you know, I quite, but you know, these are um, mainstream films. Yes. Uh, but are they kind of different in the sense, you know, the philosophy behind you acting same? Uh, very similar. Very similar. No, right. one that necessarily thing is to say that, you know, you have to make money, so you do. No, not natural. That's the truth. Right. But yeah. there is. Do you also <coughs> see that there are you know, so-called mainstream films now? You know, thanks to. Do I also see what? Uh, so-called mainstream films, which also have you know a place for roles uh, where you can actually you know, exhibit your. It's not so. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, like know. English English, for example. Right. I think so that's a good film. It sort of talked about something which is very very. Uh, relevant and people have faced it and people are facing it all the time that unless you can speak English you are not educated which is I think absolutely rubbish and um, uh, and disrespectful towards yourself um, so people identified with and she has Gauri has Gauri is the director who has found a way to say the story narrate the story in a way that people would receive it and emotionally and intellectually would understand their predicament themselves. I think there are mid-ground films like that. Lutera I would consider is not one of the Bollywood Bollywood film, but one of these kind of films to try to tell a story. It's actually uh, the last leaf of uh, the famous story of uh, Oh Henry. Oh Henry. Anyways, um, uh, but what your question was actually no, I, I was just asking yes, that yes. You know, there is space now for doing you know, yes. serious roles. Yes. There is a sort of dichotomy between parallel yes. and. I wish that kind of the space was wider enough, yeah. but it's not enough. So, people, uh, films like uh, Sunrise, which is on Netflix, if you have time to watch it, it's one of my best performances and one of the best films that I have done. Uh, Hotel Salvation, for example, uh, it's one of the lowest budget films that I have ever done in my life. And uh, but uh, I wish that it had more money so that I don't have to do Commander Two and Force Two and other whatever the sequels that I am in. Um, because the tru truthfully, I have to pay my bills and I have to subsidize a bit of masala is necessary. But yeah, you know, I have to subsidize my 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 involvement in uh, shop in this films where which where my heart lies. Um, and those films do not give me money, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure that you asked that question, but I will justify that because I said that, and uh, and I'm happy that I can do both, uh, from Robo to I am also in Robo two, and which is uh, which is yet to come out, and I'm also in uh, Hotel Salvation, where. Uh, you know, I think uh, those are soft power. This movie, if it can be somehow, like Shreya uh, is doing an amazing, amazing job that she has brought it here and to let people watch that movie because it leaves you with amazing uh, lightness and hope and uh, awareness about something which is so inevitable and we do not consider that particular subject to talk about that. Any time, any day, anywhere, to anybody, and yet we, we somehow behave as if it's not never going to happen again. Okay. So uh, to talk about it gently and like with lightness, with wit and humor, and take you there and realize, oh, okay, this is okay. You know, this is not the end of the story. It's going to continue somehow. Uh, sorry, Roger. No, I just have a couple of quick comments on soft tasks. Yes, the yes. 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 question came yes. about yes. Of Indian films. Yes. <clears throat> the amount of the numbers of non-Indians seen. You know, one of the interesting things was last year, Amir Khan's number yes. was a runaway hit in China. Yes. Because China only allows a certain number of films, they have a quota yeah. of foreign films. And Dunga, and before that, Three Idiots were actually uh, yes. a, a very this popular year, in China. This year. Uh, it's still running. Still running. It's still running. Run. 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 Yeah. So I've met several Chinese yes. you know, Elsewhere, uh, they admitted to having yes. that's one. And the second is, you know, Gandhi 
I think it's Gandhi. Now, part of the financing actually came from NFDC, the National Film Development Company, which is something that is not you know, that well known. So, that's something to ponder about. Yeah, yeah okay. I have some. Oh, yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah. My name is Sojin Chen, and I guess uh, I am only one uh, non South Asian here. And um, I'm not a very film. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm not a film person, but I uh, have watched a couple of your movies, English, English, and uh, Life of Pi, which I really, really enjoyed watching. And um, I like Hindi movies, and um, I mean, compared to Tamil movies, but I want to share uh, two points which I have uh, observed so far. Yeah. Um, the first one is, uh, I mean, I was thinking of uh, the political economy of uh, the film industry. Mm, you know, uh, comparing the Indian uh, the movie industry and Korean one. Right. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, um, and I was thinking this political economy by linking the, um, you know, I mean, different industries including the film industry, I mean the impact of film industry to other, on other industries in India and South Korea as well. Uh, well, well. For example, like, you know, Korean actors and actresses, they are contributing to Korea's economy really, really substantially. I mean, by um, appearing in the movies and also by I mean, advertising some kind of, for example, like cosmetic, uh, you know, like products. So what happens, like, this um, film industry has a really huge impact um, to um, to other like global audience, especially in other Asian countries like China or Southeast Asia. You will see a lot of uh, K-pop I mean fans in the Singapore or Malaysia or in China as well. So I was. I was observing so many times in, in, in the airport when I make the trip to Korea home, home back, and, and a lot of Chinese, uh, they you know the travelers, they just do, I mean fill their bags with Korean cosmetics, and they're saying, oh, I love this brand because my favorite actress, uh, she is you know advertising this, and I want to use this one and to look you know beautiful like her like this. So this kind of like uh, impact. The second impact, maybe it can, uh, you know, give um, the other, you know, industry like third, third impact, second, yeah. Yes. But I couldn't really observe this kind of like really like sort of power uh, oh, oh, from yeah, this yeah, yes. Hollywood, uh, Hollywood industry. And the second one is well, I was thinking of um, the problems. What could be the problems for like um, you know Hollywood uh, industry, which has a lot of prospects. But um, and this is related to um, yes. my thought of like Tamil industry. Did you find an answer? Uh, no, I'm just you know okay, telling you. So I want to yes. ask you: um, Is there any way for both uh, like Hindi movie, Hindi movie industry, and the Tamil movie industry make some synergy um, to appear? Yeah, industries. to appear. Um, well, the only thing which came, I'm, I first of all I must say that I have no clue, but. Having said that, maybe a few thoughts which came to my mind I would like to share that when I landed in, landed in Egypt, in Cairo, in 1999, the first thing the cat girl asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from India. Oh, I'm the Pacha! <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first thing they said. And if, if Pacha Saab, you know, poster or, you know, the, the, the billboard with some product with Mr. Pacha, I think people would buy it. Um, it depends on which which country you are in and how they relate and how strongly they would relate to a particular actor character. Um, quite often, unfortunately, or I don't know how it is because uh, I don't think that Bollywood film, apart from like Dangal, for example, that that might change the perception because it is a serious film, though presented quite uh, interestingly in a mainstream way, but it talks about something very, very important. So people might relate to that. And if those kind of films are being exported and shown, otherwise other films, they don't take them so seriously. People would have, uh, like my Western white friends would look at a Bollywood film, though it's a serious film, they would laugh. They're like, eh? 
It's so funny. Look, the actors are crying in the scene. But the audience would laugh, but this is comedy because it's not true. It's not truthful. The acting is not truthful enough. So how can I idealize or I, you know, a person whom I don't believe or trust? So I guess these are the two thoughts which came to my mind that it's not powerful enough to, um, to capture you wholeheartedly in order to make you to buy a product which will be endorsed by those actors. I think. It has to be more powerful. If Ben Kingsley does something, I don't buy it. Maybe. He's a trusting more. He can come this so so efficiently. He will not tell me the. He will not tell me a lie. About this product, is, you know. So, yeah. So that kind of thing would come more with, say, the sitcoms, for instance, yes. because even even in Korea, uh, remember this uh, this actress who was kidnapped or wasn't kidnapped. Mm -hmm. One was not very really sure, but turned up at the other Korea. And, and, and she sort of uh, was seen as wearing some kind of a makeup, which was originally from, from the Korea she had left behind. So that kind of thing, in, in the shorter versions of the film which sitcoms are, it's more effective. But in many ways, I, I, you see, a, a film is, a, is a, a today's version of what uh, drama was, say, in, in, in the classical times. Mm -hmm. If you went to see Aeschylus, you, you, went to, uh, you got a message out of it. I'm sure films are giving different, of course, messages to different people because uh, the arts are far more sophisticated now and everybody is deriving and extrapolating different messages from the same set of symbols, the symbolism, which, is, which a film is, it's a series of symbolism. So these are kind of different things you get out of seeing the same, same kind of thing. I'm now going to move to uh, fellow Assamese uh, who, like you and I, was uh, also okay. born in Assam. Rupok. Uh, Rupok. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Hussain, uh, for being uh, I must confess, uh, I was, uh, was amazed uh, in awe of you, but it's good. I've never met you in person now. Good, uh, now you know good to see you here in Singapore. Singapore. So I think it's easier to meet. Good that she had not met you now. <laughs> good to see That's you. not good that he had met you, yes. Yeah. So good to see you in Singapore. And uh, again, I've only watched uh, English and English. I must right. confess, I've not watched the Life of Pi, the Red the Movie. Uh, just uh, one question and one comment. Uh, Asami cinema started very early. Uh, one of the first movies, so many of you would know. 35. Uh, 1935, the first Asami movie was made, Joy Motive. Yes. Indeed, in the annals of Indian cinema, it's one of the first movies to be made. Really? Uh, but 1913, this, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dada, Dada Science? Yes, yes. No, after this, what's after? Much after that. Yes, so 35. 35, so it's not as. Uh, so one of the earliest Indian movies to be made. In comparison to other parts of India. Yeah, many other parts of India. Raja Harishchandra was 1913. Silence. That was silent. That was not a silent. Jyotir was a talking. So after that, there were Assembly Cinema had a movie together. Many movies between Zarika and Jyotir Prasad Agrabha and many movies. But where are we now? What, why have we got left behind? In terms of Asimese films? In terms of movies, like for example, Tamil movie, Telugu movie, they made it big on the national stage. Right. So see, after, say, a certain Janu Burwa and others, he is uh, not yet in the forefront of even the regional movie. So, what, in your opinion, uh, would be the reasons for that? Um, I don't know if this is the right forum to talk about it, it's, yeah. but since it's yeah. a movie, but we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, if you allow me yeah. to yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. chair. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rupak was talking about Asimese Film Industry, where I come from. Just to let you know, there are only 40 cinema halls in the entire state of Assam. And out of those 40, uh, almost 20 or rather uh, eight, 15 of them are in the area where people don't speak Assamese. Uh, so if you make an Assamese film and if it is not good enough, good enough to surpass or cross the emotional antagonism of the other, those who do not speak Assamese, if you have to surpass that, cross that, then you have to make a very good film. Uh, so there are very few good films which are being made in Assam. Uh, some of them are extremely good. Uh, some of them are very, very mediocre. And some of them are really bad. <clears throat> I happen to be part of at least one Asmis film a year. Uh, for, for some strange reason it, it, it is like that. 
And uh, so there are films, but there are no shops to sell films. So if you spend, say, 50 lakhs of rupees, Indian rupees, in an Asmis film, you will get back maybe one lakh. At the most, if at all the government inter interferes and say, no, we are going to give you back the taxes for the first year. So obviously there is no market, I, and, and, and also there is a lack of, uh, it's, I guess it is in every sphere nowadays that people want to become famous instantly uh, because of all the you know, possibilities are there in, through social media and YouTube and all that. So we don't learn the craft before we yes, venture into it. subtitling an answer to that? I mean, if, no, if I, don't so. a no, to, I don't think so. It's about the quality of films which are being made. You, know, you can't even stand 10 minutes of it, so people do not want to leave their comfort zone, which is home, and then they will say, if an SMS film is made, people say, oh, you'll come on television, I'll watch it later. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So, yeah. And just a short comment, perhaps one uh, topic could be, I don't know if you've heard of Mr. Jada Payam. Yes, uh, Jada I would Pahim. love to make a film Maybe on him. Someday yes. there should be a movie about Jada Payam. Yeah. Jada Payam, for uh, your information, is a, it's a very nice idea. He is a very humble man. Very, uh, not even, uh, very highly educated, but he has singularly created a forest and he is known as the forest man of India. Yeah. So maybe someday in the future... So if you spend 50 lakhs on him, you will have to get like, back. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, the thing is that I am not a filmmaker, that's the yeah. problem. <laughs> but I can hire or I can... All right, so we will go, go in the following order now. Uh, uh, um, uh, Anish, Dr. Dipinder, and Kush. Anish is... Uh, Anish, you, uh, you introduce yourself. Yes, hello, my name is Anish. 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 Yes, Anish. Okay, my question is on uh, cross, cross, cross border interaction. I mean, in what way can we actually turn our Indian film industry into a South Asian film industry? And by doing this, we need to encourage more cross border work. Like, you know, you see, there was an issue, remember, when uh, in the movie, and they had Mushkil, when, you know, um, the scenes involving the Pakistani actor, same thing when Mayura Khan acted in. In race, there's an issue. And another thing is that, um, you know, because our Bollywood is in uh, Mumbai, there's actually, you know, the Gunda Giri of the shift, shift, uh, shift, 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 and the right wing Hindu parties. So, in any way, it, it's. Okay. Yes, do you, do you think that this has been. Uh, I wish I would speak like him. I hope to be so politically goddamn correct. Anyway, so you, you, you actors are sometimes constrained by. Yes, by sometimes. It's a safe environment. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay, in any way, do you think it, it has been, you know, a uh, political obstacle having the film industry in Mumbai, you know, probably? Yes. Do you think she, she, you know, shifting somewhere else? For example, uh, even uh, Kolkata, I think Mamta Benerjee is probably, you know, she is more open minded. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, 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 I'm speechless. <laughs> so, the question is on cross border work. So, the question is on cross border work. Yeah, you know, so how, how can we make this more, you know, encourage people to people interaction and political intervention in Hollywood? Thank yeah, you. Can, can, can a million be restrained? No, I have a question then. Yeah. Okay, let's let's take the uh, interesting uh, details out. Yeah. I mean, can a million restrain uh, yeah. a, a, a film? Of course it can. I mean, yeah. uh, 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 I, uh, that's almost common sense, isn't it? Yeah. That it can to a certain extent, because otherwise you would be... Uh, if you rebel, if you are, if you are making a statement, if, if it's an underground movie, and there have been underground movies and all that sort of thing, also, I mean that's that's another story. But Your second part of the question was that the first part of the question was that how is it possible to sort of have oh, film, combined film? I think uh, there are a few aspects to it. I think you would be actually uh, uh, you would know more, way more than me because. I think there has to be uh, 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 sort of agreements between the governments, like Canada and India has come together, then England and India has come together. If you shoot a film in England, now you get subsidies to sort of, in the beginning, to lure people to come, like we should take a Singaporean actor or a Hong Kong actress or an actor from uh, this part of the world and create a story and also come together to introduce that particular, you know, uh, thread of um, uh, to walk. But uh, in terms of intervening uh, Bombay, I don't think Bombay is that. The news that you hear sitting here is only the things which is troublesome. 
like Delhi is the capital, what do you call it, the red capital of the world. I mean, there are 25 million people there, you know. Things happen, of course it happens, it's terrible that happens, but not everybody is getting raped all the time. So when you enter there, it's a different, so Bombay, people are uh, freely making it. I don't think that would, if, if there is an intervention by Shiv, Shiv Sena, which has happened, and Karan Johar gave it to it, I was very surprised, like, really? You would do that? Yes, because his money is involved, it's economics. It's nothing to do with art whatsoever. So, um, in some places, they do it, and for, and they do it not necessarily for the love of their own communities, about money, most of the time. So, and most of the politics is about I think nobody, I, I, you, you know more, much more than me that that is Bangladesh and India in love with each other, really, emotionally. No, it's about all uh, convenient relationship. No, it's about convenience. Pakistan and India, they fight about convenience, nothing else than that. There could be personal friendship between two ambassadors, and that's a different thing altogether. But uh, strategically, it's about convenience and it's about economy, nothing more than that, according to me, what I have read and what I have seen all my life friends who are in uh, in the in the business. So uh, it's about that. I don't think we need to move the capital of filmmaking from Bombay to another place. What you suggested to go I don't think that will solve the problem. Well, unfortunately I mean much of our region when we say shooting yeah. means something else <laughs> <laughs> other than shooting a film. Yes. Okay, Dipinder and then, then Ankush. Dr. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a quick comment based. You mentioned the work that you're presently doing is on Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Um, it just reminded me during the student days in the US, um, there's a dance drama version done by Conrad Brooks. Right. And it's a multi ethnic yes. uh, version, a uh, multi ethnic performance. Uh, I knew nothing about very little fragments of the Bhagavad Gita, which you read in comic books. And Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in India, in Delhi. This was okay. in upstate New York. Okay. And I recall coming out the entire group of two hmm. dash percentage. You had to go to America to see the Gita. <laughs> yes, indeed. And that's why I went to help my enlightenment. And I remember we collectively came out. And this was just before the first Gulf War was being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. It should if the entire Bush cabinet could be locked into a room and made to see this, yeah. they it would change see the mind. folly of war. I mean, it was profoundly <coughs> moving. And, uh, but the two questions that I have both personal, if I may, yes, please. Uh, take a liberty. You mentioned you came out uh, at the age of 12, it seemed to be after Yadu Kibarat, and you came out yes. feeling yes. that sense. Seeing one of the everything I'm right? uh, Sorry? I'm saying one of Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. from Punjab. Yes. Um, you know, my, my, my question is, I mean, it's what informs, motivates, misguidance and the actor and, 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 and the person. So um, this would provide context. Uh, I think I was reminded of two episodes of you know inside the director's room or the director's conversation. This is the Dish School. Uh, Tish, the Tisch School in New York. Yeah. And these were two conversations, one with Robert De Niro and Susan Sarandon. Both are very political individuals. Susan Sarandon's politics comes out in her work. De Niro sees that exactly. It's just this is aesthetic part in governance. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I mean, how do, do, do you do these issues come up with you and conversations with your colleagues? And I mean, how do you? I mean, I, I, there's no resolution as such, but how does it inform your choice of films and uh, and other conflict? The second question is: You went from NSB to London to study. How did that experience change both your professional and your outlook uh, for the outlook as well? The first one, um, it's it's a journey. Uh, um, okay, let me tell you. So, if you if you read any modern play or yeah play rather, you'll see open the book and the name of the writer, the play and the writer, and then the next page you'll see characters. Hmm? Anybody? Who? I'm sure that most of you have gone through some plays or 
you, know, you recognize that some some characters. It's called characters, and then the name of the character is. So when I came to LSD, National School of Drama, and I opened uh, a play written by uh, Shubhrak called Mitti Gikari, Nitya Kavita. And I opened the page for the first time. I open the page and I see Patra and Patra. Patra means the male characters, and Patris are the female characters. So I'm like, why Patra? Why not Charitra? Charitra means character in, in, in Sanskrit. So why, did, why have they written Patra? So then, Naitya Shastra was taught to us and I became very interested. So if, sorry, to yeah, us. So this is a vessel, Patra means a vessel. So if this is a Patra, and an actor has to become like water to fit into the Patra. So that sort of resonated very deeply inside me and I realized, then I was wondering what are the qualities of water that a human being can ever embody. So transparency, fluidity, and the ability to quench your thirst. Now, fluidity to the extent that what does it mean physically and experientially inside? My body is not only my muscular body, but I have my all the all the things which is housed inside the body, or the body is housed inside the whatever you call it. So all the ideas that I have been taught or I have learned in the value system, morality, the sense of right and wrong, my emotional reactiveness to the things, to cold, to humiliation, those things have to be, I have to surpass all of them in order to be flexible enough to play Hitler with equal empathy when, if, uh, as I, when I would play uh, Jesus Christ. So I have to go beyond all that. If I have a tiny bit of judgment against what Hitler did to 6 million Jews, I will not be able to play Hitler honestly. There will be dishonest I don't want to do that. So when I shy away from what Hitler has done, then I'm failing the character. But at the same time, if I have to, if I ask Hitler to play Jesus Christ, he would not be able to do it because he's not large and wide enough to embrace Jesus Christ, but Jesus can embrace Hitler. So then I thought, okay, am I going to become Jesus Christ? What is my journey in order to be, as my dad told me, okay, you want to be an actor, no problem, I'll not speak to you for the next three years, but be the best one. So how do I do that? So my studies, my meeting, friends, I had great teachers, I realized that my ideas of everything about life have to be re-questioned, re-examined, and not to be taken for granted that this is the truth. I have to rise beyond the truth which is now, and it may I may find other dimensions of the same truth again as I go ahead. So that's the journey. Now, answering your question, that do I have a view about yes, I do have strong opinions, but I do not take them seriously. I know that that when I have a strong view, that is my reactive, conditional body that I'm reacting to certain things. When I see killings by ISIS, I'm like, really? I have problems. I had even I should not say it to you. So, um, <laughs> so I have I have all these issues. But then, when I am calm, when I am here, when I'm a bit more transparent and calm, then I realize, okay, that is the other view, equally valid truthful, uh, another truth, opposite truth, and I have to go beyond that all the time. So, though I have strong opinions, but I try to sort of find a way, miserably fail, quite often, more than often, but I found a way to navigate between them. So I, I, I tweeted like a few days ago why I don't tweet about the things which are going wrong in the world, because I'm encouraging them by by helping to reach to more people. So I'd rather tweet about so many hundreds of thousands of things which are happening, wonderful things are happening. Mainstream news media is doing the job to bring you the bad news because they are, it's not news, it's bad news most of the time. So I'm not going to participate in that uh, process. So I hope that has answered the first question. The second question you asked me about what was it? Uh, just the personal tra transformation yes. of um, Yes, this, it was very simple. It was shocking, actually, first when I arrived in, in, 
in London. Uh, and uh, the shock was, uh, I don't know, you would all will understand, you're all from South Asia, so uh, you'll understand. Except two of you. Right. <laughs> uh, two. Okay. Um, the shocking was that first day of the school, and I had no money, because those days in 1990, I had to go to the you know, bank to uncash my traveler's check. And I had not as, so literally I had no penny. I was like, I was penniless. So, and lunch break came, and I'm, and I had gastritis those days, severe, like if I don't eat, I'll get you know, burning and all that. All my classmates, they brought out this tiffin box and started eating, and nobody cared or bothered to ask me, hey, would you like to eat something? I mean, if you reverse the entire situation, that one foreign student had come to India to study acting in a drama school, we'll, we will bore the hell out of her or him. Come on, eat something. No? Like, can I go to get a taxi from a uh, taxi stand? And, you know, people from Punjab, they are having the food. The first thing is that, have food, sit down, then we'll go. So that's the culture that I come from. And then, of course, I lived there for a long time in Europe. I spent around five and a half years in total. And uh, I realized where they come from. They, they don't even think that you would not eat because you don't have money. Because you still choice and they give you space, which I miss in India. Once you said that about the difference between Calcutta and Delhi, yes. you asked somebody the direction to somewhere. Did you not? <laughs> yeah. Okay, about locking up the entire Bush cabinet before the, the second uh, uh, one war. No, 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 you see, if they're exposed to Gita, the problem is, I mean, there are two schools of thought, isn't it? The Arjuna and Krishna. And the Bush cabinet would have been very, very puzzled as to which one to follow. I mean, you down the consequences of going to war, or will not go. But Krishna failed Krishna. to, you know, to stop them. So they, he tried so, to. Yeah, it depends on, again, as I say, what of Gita you perceive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Antush? Uh, thank you, Mr. Hussain. My question is uh, concerning the censorship in India. Right. So as an actor, when you invest so much into a movie, you spend a couple of years. And leaving aside economic considerations, which often is, I think, the case why uh, filmmakers might accept censor cuts and let their films be yes. released. Yes. Say you have a regional movie which is maybe economically not going to be a mainstream uh, broadcast, so you know, a mainstream production, and you put in a couple of years uh, as a creative yes. person, and then this censor board tells you that so so many parts of the movie have to be removed. Uh, how do you reconcile that with what you have put in and what your idea of the movie is, and uh, how do you move forth beyond that if you hit that road? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, an actor in India, unless you are involved from the process of conception of the film, you do not spend two years. Just to let you know, the culture of filmmaking in India is not hasn't yet gone that there where actors are involved from the beginning. They are mostly involved at the last moment, unless you are producing the film like Sakhans, that you are involved from the beginning and they would dictate what stories to be told or not. People like actors like me, I'm almost asked at the last moment. If they try to find expensive actors or like stars and they don't find them because they're asking too much money, they then come to me. So I'm okay with that. Uh, so I am most of the time, <laughs> that's the truth. They come to me at the last moment because, and most of the time, 15, 20 days or one month before, and if, if, if I like this story, I do it, you know, uh, reshuffling my dates and all that. Um, as far as censorship is concerned, uh, thankfully you know that he has been removed. Mr. Pahlaz Nihalini, that's the great news for me. <laughs> and uh, I believe that there should not be any censorship, there should be certification. And uh, we should not disrespect Indian audience, that they, the audience who is used to uh, Mahabharata and Ramayana and everything is there in Mahabharata for adultery, and homosexuality to some extent in terms of Krishna and what is it called, uh, uh, Srikhandi and everything, transgender issues, every possible issue. And we are used to that. I mean, don't tell me what to watch and not to watch. You have no way to tell me. And, and also, when you bring about the truth of any kind of truth, especially sensible films, meaningful films, and if you like lipstick on a mukha, for example, if you are stopping that film to come to the audience as it was intended to or made, 
then you are stopping audience to evolve. You are you are, you are creating a you know hurdle for them to look at the truth, get horrified if we have to, and ask the question, oh my god, is this what we are doing? Even conflict, without the conflict, there is no growth, according to me. There cannot be any growth without any conflict. I'm not talking about it has to be violent conflict or physical conflict. So, um, but, uh, to answer your question, that does it bother me? It does, uh, philosophically. Financially, I'm not involved in it. And, at the, and the other aspect is that uh, principally it does bother, bother me also, but what I'm saying is that I leave the film completely, let, I let go of the film as soon as I finish my shoot. Like it has its own journey. I'm not responsible for anything, apart from the fact that sometimes like my producer will say, are they please go to Singapore and just represent the film because I just, because I stand by this film. It's one of my best films I've done so far in my life. So I stand by it. So some films I go, some films I refuse to go. Because I've done my job. Producer's job is to, you know, and also sometimes I'm also contractually bound to come and they can sue me. But they won't, I know. But, so if that happens, I don't wish. Well, yeah, thank you. We have someone from the land of uh, Vittorio de Sica, uh, Silvana Magnano, <laughs> Rosanna Podesta. Do you have a question? Uh, no, she doesn't have a question. Before I wrap up, I'm going to uh, Professor uh, Shubhrata Mitra, you are a professor of political science. What, in your view, would be the takeaway from all of us from an interaction of this? I'm going to turn to come. Um, Excellency, I come from Sri Lanka. Excellency, Ambassador Chaudhary, our distinguished guest, Mr. Anderson, friends. I uh, have I have to apologize for imposing soft power on you. <laughs> we were hoping to have a good conversation, some good time with you, and that's what we have had. But we have to justify what we do. Right. Because we are not um, uh, just a happy chatting family, we are also a think tank. And under mandate, we are expected to work on foreign policy and security, governance and trade and uh, economy of South Asia. Kind of Singapore to South Asia, South Asia to Singapore. So why do films come in? We wanted you, we wanted to film talk, and uh, we also wanted uh, something for a mandate. That's where soft power comes in. Um, power, you know, hard or soft has only one objective behind it. This is the capacity of A to force B to do something B doesn't want to do, or stop him from doing something that B wants to do. And B does it because of C. Either there's a gun at your forehead, or some cash in the hand, or whatever you need. That's the hard power. The soft power is much more subtle, you have to find it. Yes. It's to project reality such a way that implicitly you will be doing what I want you to do. So, is this something that India wants done, that all countries want to do, and where do Indian films come in? That was the uh, subliminal expectation from this conversation. And uh, I've got a lot of things to take away from here. First and foremost, um, Indian films are not made by, made by the Indian government. The government, of course, affects films by the film censor board, by stopping them from doing certain things. No, also before that. By prizes, by grants. And also that the, the idea which is generated, don't make this film, will not pass it at all. Yeah, but directly the government, government does, try to yeah. Yeah. Directly the government does come in but very marginally. Yes. It's not a government which produces uh, uh, propaganda films. Yes. I mean it does, it has got, got its own. But the films we are talking about are made by entrepreneurs yes. who are doing it for a profit. Yes. They sell because Indians see them. Yes. Which means they have some resonance with life out there in India. And collectively, they project that resonance to the world out there. Right. So, first and foremost, as a political scientist, 
I find that image vital and positive because India has been presented by a process called Orientalization. They projecting India as the irrational other to distinguish the rational self. That is what we got from Edward Said. And this Saidian Orientalization of India is how India has been thought of in political theory right. and by many people who take decisions about the problem. What the film industry has done is to show that Indians out there can be as strategic, as noble, as ignoble, as human, as people anywhere. So in that sense, right. it has humanized the image of India for the global audience. That's one major contribution. Second, Hindi films. I keep telling my friends, I'm not really Hindi films, but it was a film. And uh, my foreign friends are watching these films, I tell them not to stop watching when the credit lines come. I say, just look at the names. When what comes? Sir. Credit lines at the end of the film. That is where you will see the names, cool. the tell the tale. Because those names have not been selected by the government of India. No, no, no. So the film industry has also been, also been a, a projection of what makes India so, yes, yeah? yeah. where talent rises. There was a time when the Dilip Kumars and Mina Kumaris had to accept on Indian sounding names. Yes. Today you make a film called My Name is Khan and you get a prize for it. That's true. Now, of course, I now remember Amit Hussain's uh, parting lecture. There are problems in India. There is implicit censorship coming in. And there is explicit censoring in terms of vigilantes. But still, from the mainstream, I take the Dr. Sen's point here, the mainstream and art cinema have come together. So films like Vajir al Mastani can be simultaneously um, great um, earners of profits, but also powerful films which can be seen as art cinema. Right. Oh, yes, I see it as one. So, all these things put together, Indian films have become, for me, part of the text of Indian politics, which I'm able to teach from. Right. I no longer have to show a passage to India to prove the otherness of India, but I can pick up any Hindi film and tell my students, look at it, you have there a window to India out there. So, as soft power goes, Indian films have served a great purpose in telling the story of India. Not necessarily the greatness of India, yeah. but the ordinariness of India, the banality of India. So, banalizing the spiritual image or image of poverty, corruption, rape, right, what have you. Those are the kind of mindsets that have been challenged because of the movie industry. And of course, beyond that, is the creativity. And we were talking earlier, and I'll, one of my takeaways is a private takeaway because it was a private conversation. When you talked about the secure partnership that an actor makes, and that which makes him a great actor, I have to tell you that I learned from you why even an audience of one is no problem for you. And today, we don't have a great audience because we organize it at a very short notice. But you have seen from the range of questions. Yes. The oh, excitement that you have created absolutely. and as connectivity goes, it's conversations like this that we need to give some volumes to our work on foreign policy, economy and governance. It's films. It's the thickness of India. It's a take such as yours that you need. ISIS offers nothing to its guests except a book which you'll get from the chair, oh, and a good conversation and a long-term connectivity. Yes. Do let us know if you're going to Singapore again, and we'll have, we'll have the joy of reconnecting. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> what you said of, of the film, I mean, wouldn't it be true of all, yeah, all ethos, all systems, I mean, films, uh, a, a, a Brazilian uh, film industry will do the same thing for Brazil, or, uh, 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 Scandinavian film will do the same thing for Scandinavia. Am I right in extrapolating that from what you said? 
You are and there is nothing uh, unique to India and such. We are talking about what, uh, as I said earlier, on what drama did to the Greeks, what films are doing to the world globally, and to all of us, uh, it, uh, all the different varieties of, of social systems, ethos, or ethos as if there is such a word. So it will be true of every, uh, everywhere, isn't it? It is true of films vis a vis humanity. Uh, and she, um, Dr. Chaudhary was taught, he was one of the last students of a very uh, great man uh, called Hedle Bull. He was a purveyor of neo realism which is, which looks at things the way they are, or the facticity of facts. Like uh, on the table, I mean, cat is on the mat, is how it comes, from Wittgenstein. But it's the thinness of things. That's the tradition in which you are yes. And that is what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, a country is what it is. And the sooner we understand it, the better it would be for our conversation. Otherwise, it will be a shadow talking to a shadow. I mean, the Chinese are Chinese, Indians are Indians. Between 58 and 62, 45 million Chinese were killed. Most were killed by hunger, some were killed by beating, others were eaten. I mean, this is the story of uh, the Great Leap Forward, and uh, after that came the Cultural Revolution. The Chinese have done all that. Yes. Indians don't do things that way, but Indians have other ways of being perverse. The only difference between Brazil and India would be, if at all, is the number of films that India makes. That's the only difference, if it makes any difference to the impact of it. I think it would make a great impact because of the numbers and the states. Including as Miss Film in Industry, which makes around like, 12 films a year, but that's the only difference, I guess. Um, India, of course, is a very large country, yeah. they different regional mediums, and every state in India is projecting its own language and is giving uh, incentives to produce films. But collectively, yes. they produce that kind of banalization of India. And I would like a world where all countries are banalized yes. so that they project themselves as themselves. After that, Conversation can concentrate on inventing a similarity yes. in terms of which they can talk about dissimilarities. So I can enjoy the um, love in the time of cholera and that kind of magic realism and even start to realize about our real cinema. So that would be the kind of world that cinema like yours leads us to. It's a much better world than the world of specialist of foreign policy or security policy, what have you. Because they essentialize and essentialize India to a very different uh, kind of India from the kind of India we find Absolutely. in this film. So non-essentialization, the deconstruction of essentializing images into just what the Papa Makan kind of films is also a very good, very great contribution. Of course, there is creativity, um, there is this standing to make, there is shining, there is the making of um, you know, wonderful films like that. That is also important. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the bulk of the mainstream cinema right. and their contribution to my kind of work, which is teaching politics. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much indeed. It was yes. absolutely uh, uh, one of the most stimulating conversations we've had. I'm going to uh, leave you with, with a, a marvelous book. Uh, this book written by one of our <laughs> colleagues, Dr. Ronaja Shen. Uh, it's called Nation at Play. You see it's a picture out of Lagan film. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ronaja was inspired by uh, uh, Duke of Marlborough's uh, uh, the uh, Battle of Waterloo being won in the play films of each. So through, through cricket, he sort of inspires the kind of thing that you think films will achieve right. for, for, for nations and, 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 and countries, etc. So thank you very much. Thank you for the, uh, for the excellent... Uh, uh, thank you all for, for being together here. Well, I'm going to invite you to a uh, little bit of continued interaction through the medium of tea. An afternoon tea is one of the few English traditions we have retained, but you can spend five minutes yeah. extra on it. <laughs> you want to say something? So, no, 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 no. She uh, uh, you to go. just reminding me and uh, that please spread the word tomorrow. There's a oh, film yeah, yes. at 6 15 on one show, and 7 o'clock is the other show. Name of the film is Hotel Salvation in Hindi, it's Mukti Bhavan, and uh, it's one of my best films according to. My most critical friends. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a marvelous trip. Um, so pleased to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
come to Mauritius, come, come one and come home, etc. Village, uh, Great World City. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like uh, Hotel California, you can check in, but you can't check out. <laughs> but one line is one one sentence which is already, already there in the trailer, so I can review that. So the owner of the not the owner, the manager of the hotel says, "Pandra din ke andar ab nikal gaye to nikal gaye, nahi to ab ghar wapas jana." So if you die within 15 days, it's okay. Otherwise, you have to go back home. Okay. So, so as nonchalantly we talk about yeah. it. The yeah. other school is the Marigold, Great Marigold Hotel. Yes. Which some of you may be experienced already. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.